night. Not many people really understand what communism is. Communism, where it come from. And it's it's because people don't understand the three principles of law, the three law systems. There's, there's three law systems that operate in this world. The first is someone's probably dying <laughs> of you know what. The first law is um, is common law. That's the law or common law is land law. It's the law that governs men in relation to each other on land. The second type of law is maritime law and that governs ships at sea, how they interact with each other. And maritime law and common law are probably very similar. And the reason for these systems is to try and prevent bloodshed and try and get a resolution before it comes to killing each other. And what it also does is that when the protocols of law, whether it be the land law or the law of the sea, which is maritime law, if certain protocols such as notice, notice of default and notice of acceptance, if these things haven't been accepted and a hostile aggressor takes over a country in violation of these protocols of law, then that aggressor never legally holds the ownership of that land. And that's the reason for these types of law. There's land law and law of the sea, law of the land, law of the sea. But the third type of law is the law that governs the crew members on ships. <laughs> And that's the sort of law which is statute law or stone law, the law that's been written as a statute. They are rules, terms and conditions and rules of a ship. Which means that when you become a crew member on a ship, someone else's ship, the moment you enter onto that ship, you then become subject to those statutes and codes and the rules of that ship. And that law is called Admiralty Law, which sort of makes sense because it's not shipping law as governing the process between or the interreaction between two ships, but this governs the interreaction between the skipper and the crew on a ship. Now, the thing is, with shipping law, all commerce and all corporations operate under this shipping law. Because in ships, if you want to be on the sea, you must be incorporated with a, with a ship, with a vessel. And if you are not incorporated with that vessel, then you will drown. <laughs> so an incorporation with with a vessel on the sea is very important and same with in the rules of commerce when you want to enter into the the rules of commerce which operates under the law of the sea as well then these the corporations also operate under the laws of the sea the law of shipping the maritime laws so that in a corporation which is really a ship without a ship a corporation has all the same manifestations of a ship has all the same sort of paperwork but the ship itself is fictional and the ship doesn't really exist it does on paper so therefore when you become a citizen of a corporation 
you become subject to the same type of admiralty law that the crew members on a ship are subject to. You do what the captain says. So in a corporation, the captain of the ship is basically the magistrate in a courtroom. And when you don't follow the rules of that corporation, which is the rules of that corporate or that um, commercial shipping entity, then you are subject to the penalties in relation to those violations of that ship. That's not land law or law of the sea or maritime law. That's shipping law. The law governing crew members on ships and also governing citizens within a corporation. Now corporations are a thing that's designed by a government, by a de jure government of a country, of a land. And what the land does is it creates a debtor corporation and then it offers people, which is the government, or people that want to become beneficiaries or servants of that government, they then enter into that corporation and they can benefit from the corporation on the condition that they serve the corporation. But of course when you enter into that corporation, that governing corporation, you have to follow the rules of that corporation. That's why a citizen must apply for a driver license and then follow the rules of that corporation of that driver license in relation to what their driver license is. So when you go on the road, you have to follow those rules. But something very odd has happened. In the 1900s or around then, 1920s, the first internationals, the first four internationals were born. And an international is a corporation not deriving from the de jure country of where you were born, but it's an offshore company. It's a, it's a thing that derives from no land base. It's international, meaning not national. And communism is the ruling system which is within those international corporations, they are still bound by this thing called admiralty law. Those international corporations are communes, or that's where the word communism is coming from. It's the governing of those international corporations. And you will notice that all of these communists, these first four communists, these first four um, internationals, they all operate under military rule. You'll see that the atrocities caused by Hitler and Stalin, Pol Pot, Mao Zedong, all of these incredible, brutal dictators were the heads, they were the magistrates of a private international corporation. <laughs> and when you become a citizen of an international corporation you are no longer considered human because a citizen of a corporation legally is considered a creature which is an animal a creature is an animal in the Webster's Dictionary so those citizens of an international corporation such as the Commonwealth of Australia that is registered to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission which is a company of the United Nations and United Nations is an international it has no land it depends on all of the corporations that have joined it to accept or to take the equitable title of those lands but it doesn't have any land itself it is a total absolute fiction and those people that have joined these international companies these corporations and subjected themselves to this admiralty communist law 
governed by these dictators and military pirates because they don't have any land. You have done that on your own ignorance of the knowledge of what these three laws are. Law of the land, common law, that relates to men on a sovereign piece of land. The maritime law that relates to the interaction of ships on the sea. And of course then there's admiralty law which deals with the control of the crew members on ships and also the citizens of corporations. So if you don't understand these simple principles of law, then you may be a citizen of a private foreign corporation trying to claim some sort of sovereignty or some sort of a common law right. And you are basically going to make a fool of yourself to the heads of these large international pirate corporations such as the United Nations. So the real way out of this is that you must somehow start to consider the surrendering, the surrendering of your citizenship, your, like your crewman side, your crewmanship, standing in these corporations. And you've got to come back to, if you're on an international ship, into a passenger side standing. And that's why I've been harping on about the, these two birthing certificates. There's, one is the the state birth certificate, which is what you've already, that you've all mostly got. That allows you to be a citizen on their ship. But the other certificate is the thing called the certificate of birth, which is the original setting up of the trustee ship. <laughs> and that one puts you on as not a beneficiary, which is a serving, uh, a, benefit, a benefiting servant from that corporation, but as a benefactor of that trustee ship. The benefactor is like the passenger. He may take no benefit, but he holds directive power over that trusteeship. He directs the captain of his ship. The ship directs the crew. The crew are the trustees of the captain. The captain is the trustee of the benefactor or the passenger of that ship. And these two birthing certificates identify where you stand on a ship. Now, when you're incorporated into a ship, the word incorporated means you and the ship are together. If you were separated at sea, you would drown. And what they've done is they've taken your Christian name and your surname, so-called surname. And when you are asked for your name and date of birth, you will say, my name is John Henry Doe, which is an incorporation of the Christian name and the surname. The moment you have identified you as an incorporation, you will come under the international commercial law of shipping. You straight away. And then when they ask you for your date of birth, rather than giving the date of birth of your Christian name, you will give the date of birth of the surname. And of course, the surname is the serpent of the sea name. And the serpent of the sea name, the surname, is the name that creepeth up from below, that, that comes from the sewer. And any corporation that operates on land is connected to the sea via the sewer, which is the man-made channels that flow the water from land to the sea. That's its connection. That's why the symbols of Satan is always the goat. And of course, the goat, G-O-A-T, in the legal dictionary, means the sewer. <laughs> so all this satanic ritual stuff is what's happened in order to be able to, for them to be able to conjure up this piracy system that should not be on land 
but is. If you can get back, or if you can stand on your own two feet without having to accept a benefit from these corporate, foreign, international, corporate states, <laughs> big word, if you can stand without being dependent on them, or if you can exist without the benefit, then you have a greater chance of stepping back into the benefactor side of this trust. And the way I see it is that maybe that is the only real saving grace that you have. Because while you are a crew member on these ships, you are absolutely, totally under the, at the mercy of the captains of these ships. And of course, corporations only operate on profit. And if you interfere with their profit margins, whether it be legal or illegal, uh, you will pay the price. Because the bottom line for a corporation is not the, the safety of the people. A corporation's only effort or only moral or only standing or a corporation's only motive is profit and keeping the, the corporation afloat. If it goes into debt, it sinks and all those that are on it will sink with it. The corporation may want to cull its costs. It may want to drown its crew. And when you understand this type of international shipping law, this trust law system that has no mercy for citizens or its crew. As the history of the British Admiralty, you can see this in the British Admiralty, the history that how they get these crew members onto their ships and what they do with them and the stealing of their estates. These things um, can affect or can greatly damage your life if you remain as a crew member on these untrustworthy corporate ships in the sea of commerce. So that's what communism is. It is actually admiralty law. It is the people that serve a corporation, which is a corporation is a community a commune and those people that willingly enter into that become subject to the military dictatorship of communism and as we all know the history of communism is not very good when it comes to the lives of people because those people that have become citizens have lost their standing as people have become the dead entity, the dead corporation, the trustee of a dead corporation. Corporation is dead speaking. So all of these things you've been told, it's all there in front of us, but we just have to start looking. And you've got to start thinking and using, using your brain a little bit more. The most dangerous thing to man, his family, and his businesses, his enterprise, his government. That's the thing in history that has done more murdering and more destroying of people than anything else in the history of this planet. So be careful of the Nephilim, who are the giants, who are the large international corporations of this planet. If you don't know how to control them, they can be a very dangerous entity.